Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode 648. What to replace simple sugars with for weight loss and building muscle. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Moffat, medical director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin is the author of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the award-winning book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. Today I'm going to talk about one of my favorite subjects, and that, that is about weight loss and the food that you need as a fuel and why you need what type of food. Now, as you know, there's three types of food. There are carbohydrates, which are simple or comp complex sugars. There are proteins, and there are fats. The biggest problem that I have with changing somebody's lifestyle and changing their, their eating habits is not about decreasing their, their, um, the size of their meal or their portions, but it's usually about what they eat. And it's usually about eating too many simple sugars. Simple sugars are a nutrient that was always designed from time when time began simple sugars are to give you energy for physical activity you need a small amount for mental activity you need a large amount for running a marathon so simple sugars go directly into your bloodstream and they are ready for you to start using your muscles burning calories and exercising working on a farm um, building a house uh, exercising all day on a treadmill and riding a bike and doing all of your, your exercise for longer than an hour, you need a lot of simple sugars. But if you don't do that stuff, you shouldn't be eating simple sugars. Simple sugars were really meant for that. They don't sustain you. They make, you, they make your blood sugar go up and down quickly. They cause your insulin to rise and they cause you to have insulin resistance. So of all the foods, the food groups, the simple sugars are the ones that you should avoid and replace it with something else. Now, generally, simple sugars are man-made, or they are something that we have increased in our diet over the last 50 years. If you think about it, America used to be farmers, in general, and then it became industrial, and that those were many, many of the industrial jobs are, were physical, and most people didn't have, have things in their house to help them wash clothes, wash the floor. What, we didn't have robots that ran around and cleaned things for us. We didn't have maids. We got down on the floor and cleaned the floor. That's exercise. We had to hang our clothes out on the line. That's exercise. The, I mean, if you go back past when I was born, and I wasn't born during that time, but before I was born, I mean, it was very a very physical existence. We walked where we needed to go, or we ran where we needed to go. We biked. We didn't have a car. We didn't just get in a car and go, and then stop and do something that's not physical, and then eat somewhere, and then pick up our kids, and then go home. That doesn't take much sugar, and that doesn't take much energy. So when we're looking at food as a fuel, we should pick our food for what we're going to do that day. So my day is, is an hour of exercise, and it is getting dressed and going to the office and playing golf, going to, you know, on days off, going to do things that are sports or physical, but I'm not doing that all day. And I honestly don't need simple sugars because it brings my blood sugar up and then it drops it. And then I'm starving. And then I eat things I shouldn't eat. And that's what I'm trying to get my patients to see is that the worst thing in the world to have is, okay, I'm going to go through the list of these. I don't want to leave anything out. These are all simple sugars. 
sugar, white, brown, any color sugar is a simple sugar and should be avoided uh, or should be kept to a minimum. Regular soda. Regular soda is just a waste of time and a waste of calories. Um, it is it stimulates your insulin, it, it does all the wrong things to your body, and it makes you fat. All of these things make you fat, but some things they tell us are healthy make us fat too because agave has a ton of simple sugar in it. So if you put agave in your tea instead of putting in uh, sugar, then you're trading one thing for another, don't even bother. Um, honey, honey has a lot of good qualities, but it is one of the... Um, most concentrated sugars that you can have. So if you're going to have honey, you better have a tiny little bit of it and then go run around the block. Um, rice. Rice is the most glycemic grain because grains are all carbohydrates and they're all usually simple car carbohydrates. So rice is the worst and brown rice and white rice are really no different. They are both simple sugars that drive your blood sugar up and make you fat. Um, I, have, I always had a hard time with my patients who um, learned their diet in other countries. In their other countries, they did a lot more physical work. But then when they came here, they weren't doing physical work, and they then got fat because they were continuing to eat a lot of rice. So that's an issue. Um, cereals, all cereals, you might as well just not get cereal in your house because all cereals, including granola that everybody thinks is healthy, it has a lot of fiber in it, and it has a lot of dried fruit, all, and by the way, all dried fruit. I love fruit, fresh fruit, frozen fruit, that's all good, but, fr but dried fruit has sugar added. I can't find any except in the health food store that don't have sugar added. Cranberries are like the worst, because cranberries are really sour. They add a lot of sugar to make you want to eat them, and so you have to eat them in small portions and with other food like proteins and fats to, to keep your blood sugar up and not, not spike it and not make it drop right after you eat. We all know donuts are bad for us. Donuts, cupcakes, candy, cookies, all of that, all the baked goods are not good except for a special occasion. And then, be my guest, but if you're doing this every day, your special occasion is every day, then you're going to have a weight problem and a diabetes problem. So I don't advise that. All kinds of breads. I mean, I love bread. I'm Italian. I love bread and I love pasta. But eating a lot of bread is just like eating a donut. I mean, there's a, there is sugar in bread. There's all, and bread is made of wheat or oats or some other grain that stimulates our insulin and drops our blood sugar after we get a little high from it. White potatoes. White potatoes have a lot of... They're one of the only vegetables included in this group, but white potatoes have a lot of um, sugar in them. And if you put them in the refrigerator, they get more sugar. Um, they make sugar out of their starch. Pancakes and waffles, unless you use high-protein pancake mix, then they are very carby. Noodles of any kind, Chinese noodles, Italian noodles, they all have simple carbs in them and will cause you to gain weight. Um, sweet tea, sweet tea, I know. Sweet tea is so good, but sweet tea isn't worth it because it's just like drinking soda without carbonation. They just put dump a bunch of sugar in tea. So drink your tea without that, and if you're going to use a, a sweetener to replace it, use stevia and pure stevia, just stevia powder, but pure stevia, as pure as you can get. Stevia is from a plant. It's not a chemical. It's not like the other sweeteners that continue to stimulate your insulin and make you feel hungry later. So... It's, it's different. So sweet tea can be made with stevia, and you can get, get the um, sugars off your list there. Um, all bagged snacks like pretzels, chips, cookies, um, all desserts, pies, everything except fruit uh, and cheese that you can have for dessert. Uh, yogurt is, is fine as long as you don't have sugar-added yogurt. And I, taught, and I did discuss the dried fruit, which always is amazing to me that people have, feel like they need to put sugar in all dried fruit. So that's what we call a simple sugar. It goes into your system. It's broken down quickly. It is put out into your bloodstream quickly. And, but if you're not going to go exercise after you eat it, then you should just not eat it because that's a bad choice. <laughs> 
So that's, that's, a, that's the simple sugar. So what do you do if you've cut out simple carbs except before or after you work out or when you're, wor when you're working in the backyard for hours on end or hiking? Those are the times you can have some simple sugars. Not too many, but some. <laughs> Um, what you replace simple sugars with is very important because you still need complex carbohydrates, not simple sugars, but complex carbohydrates. And the reason we categorize some foods as complex uh, within, within this food group is that it takes longer to break down in your intestines. It takes longer to get the blood sugar from the complex carbs into your bloodstream and therefore you don't have so much of a surge of blood sugar and insulin. Therefore, it's less likely to cause insulin resistance. So what are complex carbohydrates? Well, my favorite complex carbohydrate tastes sweet, but is, does not have simple sugar in it. It is called a sweet potato or a yam. And it is complex. It takes longer to be digested. It does not stimulate your insulin, and I have a great recipe. <laughs> and I realize that wrapping things in foil is probably not the best thing in the world to do, but it's hard to do this recipe without it. So we wrap our yams or big uh, sweet potatoes. After we've scrubbed them, we put them on um, foil. We drizzle a very highly virgin olive oil over it, and we use coarse, coarse salt. And then we, we basically roll it in, in a pinch of that coarse salt and olive oil. We wrap it tightly in the, in the foil and we put it on a um, broiler pan so that because sometimes it gets kind of, it kind of steams and gets wet when you put it in the oven. But we leave it in uh, 400 for almost an hour and they get very soft and very sweet. So when you unwrap them, it's filling. It doesn't make you hypoglycemic later. And it is a good form of a carbohydrate rather than all of those other things that we just discussed. Um, there are some beans that are really good that have uh, both um, carbohydrate and some protein and some plant protein in it. Chickpeas are also called garbanzo beans. Uh, black beans and lentils, all of those have a, um, a lot of fiber and hear me now, here's why you eat fiber. Fiber is good to push your bowel, your, uh, <laughs> your bowel contents out because you need some fiber there, but it also feeds your microbiome. All those little bacteria that run around your intestines and do good things for your health, the good bacteria do, um, they need to be fed and they need to be fed every day. So I tell my patients to eat a salad every day or you can eat chickpeas, or you can eat beans, but you need to g feed your bacteria. And so I take probiotics, and I eat celery and lettuce every day and salad every day, because honestly, I always used to wonder why we did that until I understood the microbiome. And, and honestly, there's not that much nutrition in lettuce, but it is fiber, and it does feed the bacteria in your gut. So it's important to your mental health, your physical health, your immune health, um, I mean, all of that happens in your gut, so you better make these bacteria healthy and give them the food they need, which is fiber. Okay, another area, another food that is a complex carbohydrate but also a protein is called quinoa, Q-U-I-N-O-A. It's a good source of protein, and um, it can be a substitute for breads. So quinoa is or pasta. Quinoa is um, a good food to, to add if you're going to take bread partially out of your diet. Bread's really hard to get out of your diet completely. Just dose-wise, get, or type of bread, get a Dave's high protein bread, and eat one piece of it at a meal. One piece is, is not enough to overstimulate your insulin and to make your blood sugar go up and down. So uh, one piece of whole grain, high protein bread like Dave's bread is recommended, and it, it has less than 25 grams per slice. So it does fill you up a little bit better, and um, you are getting protein and carb carbohydrate with that. Now, another thing I like to, I like to uh, substitute white and brown rice with wild rice, 
because wild rice is not really rice. It's a seed. And seeds take a long time to get broken down in your intestines, and seed provi seeds provide protein, and seeds also provide nutrients, and they provide fiber. So seeds are a, a good thing to eat pumpkin seeds and uh, and excuse me and um, sunflower seeds, but also wild rice is a seed. So that can be used instead of a bread. It can be used instead of other uh, carbohydrates. Um, I like to carry nuts with me usually as a snack because nuts have protein, fat, and carbohydrate, a little carbohydrate in them. It's a substitute for eating chips. I mean, if you're going to eat nuts and just kind of like eat nuts like, <coughs> like you would a chip, then you're not going to have the same kind of damage. Chips are pretty worthless. They've taken all of the goodness out of them and they've made them into simple sugar. So they just make your blood sugar go up. So... Having, um, having a combination in your diet is always important, but the one thing you have to limit are simple sugars and the amount of complex uh, sugars from like grains, like bread, even if it's high protein bread, you should limit the amount to 25 grams of, um, of carbohydrate at a meal. And that doesn't count fruit or vegetables, it's not counting your sweet potato, it's not counting your, your quinoa. It's, count, it's counting your breads, your sugars. It's counting anything that is made of a, of a grain, um, rice, that kind of thing. So 25 grams or less is recommended, but you can eat six times a day. So you can have 25 grams six times at different, you have to spread out your, your uh, feedings. So I've, I've suggested that to my patients, the people who do that, literally lose weight without using drugs and can lose weight. They exercise moderately and they don't hurt themselves, but eating properly is really, really important. You can't, let me, let me rephrase that. There are some people who lose weight by limiting carbohydrates. That would be me. There are some people who lose weight by limiting fat. That's a very small number. Some people lose weight by limiting protein, but not very many. I mean, that's very rare. So if you are of the majority of people, uh, in general, in the U.S., your perfect diet genetically is to decrease your simple carbs uh, and increase your fruit and vegetables, fresh or frozen, not canned, not dried, and, um, and make sure that you have a variation of your diet. You have to have a lot of protein. If you're my patient, you're getting testosterone and you're building muscle. Muscle is built from protein, and it's, it needs to be built in general from animal protein. There are very few people who are such great vegans that can actually get the right combo of amino acids and proteins to help build muscle, but they do it. But it's very difficult. It's almost like a science. It's either a science or an obsession or both. So it, you have to really concentrate on it and spend a lot of time making your meals work so that you can build muscle. The two things for building muscle that are required after uh, 50 are testosterone and protein, and enough protein that if you're building muscle, you should have, you should ta take an equivalent of grams of protein as pounds of weight. That's, I mean, if you're building muscle, that's what you should do. If you're maintaining muscle, then half your weight in grams of protein is what you need. And that's usually what people follow when they're not weightlifting, and, but they want to maintain their muscle or build muscle with testosterone. You can't be on a low protein diet and build muscle. It just, you don't have the building blocks. It's, it's impossible. Um, so it's, not just, it's not just cutting out simple sugars, it's replacing them with complex carbohydrates and also with fruit and vegetables and healthy foods that are fresh. Um, almost every cereal, junk food, chips, anything, crackers, cookies, anything you find in that center aisle um, that isn't cleaning, <laughs> cleaning uh, products is is usually um, completely filled with um, preservatives, which are bad for you, and and things these these foods leach 
your, your nutrients like your vitamins. So those are things to be avoided. So what you eat should be considered fuel. It shouldn't, I mean, every once in a while it should be considered fun, but on a day-to-day -day basis, you need the right fuel for you. And I will say this, I can't, I can't give a recommendation for every single person because everybody's different. Everybody handles different diets differently. Some people lose weight from exercising. Some don't. Some people lose weight from, from limiting calories. Some don't. Some people lose weight by limiting carbs. Some don't. So you have to find out which person you are and then go for it. Once you figure that out, then follow that diet. So it's, it's kind of like a mystery. You have to, you have to um, unravel the mystery of your own metabolism and then follow your own metabolism and do what it requires. There are some genetic tests that can tell you this. We're working on one currently, but we haven't, um, we haven't gotten trained enough to actually offer it to our patients. But you can find out which diet is best for you, which foods are best for you, which foods you shouldn't eat, based on your genetics. It's, it's unbelievable how different we all are and how individual we are. So, so when I'm giving you these recommendations, I'm trying to put them in a place that you can relate to. And if it doesn't work for you, then you have to use something else. Um, here are some strategies that um, might help you accomplish this. Um, eating proteins instead of carbs is always a good idea. Um, you should always save your carbs or the things that you consider treats to eat before or after exercise, and you can't eat them otherwise. Portion control all food. That's how this, the drug uh, semaglutide works. It makes you feel full when you're about a third of the way through, the, through your meal. And so it's, it works by limiting your, your portions by making you feel full. It also limits your, your brain feels full, your stomach feels full. It slows the emptying in your stomach, so your stomach is full longer. Uh, but you can do this on your own. You can cut the portions that you eat and eat slower and eat with smaller bites. Rushing through meals doesn't help. Rushing through meals means you're going to eat too much because your body's not going to understand that it's full without that medication um, until 20 minutes after you start eating. So if you eat really fast, you're going to still feel hungry and you're going to overeat. Um, if you're trying to diet, alcohol is not helpful. It's a toxin and your body is not going to burn fat like it should if you're drinking. So you should limit or stop drinking while you're losing weight and then slowly add back at it in a limited amount um, as, you, as you are at your ideal weight and you want to maintain it. Daily exercise for an hour or a day or more is recommended, and that's when you can have your carbs. Drink a glass of water before you eat. Drink a glass of water before you work out. Drink a glass of water after you work out. Water is really good for weight loss and for maintaining your health. Um, don't eat dessert. You don't need dessert. I use um, ricotta cheese and stevia and cinnamon to make what I call ice cream. <laughs> and ricotta cheese is very high in protein, and it fills me up. I can't eat very much of it. But it does do the trick in terms of turning off my hunger for ice cream. Eat a salad every day and feed your bacteria because they're working on your behalf from the inside of your intestines. Um, and eat more than half your weight in protein. Meat, cheese, eggs, milk products, whey protein, which is made from milk, um, pea protein, other proteins. I mean, there are proteins in some of these complex carbohydrates. All the nuts that you can eat, nuts have protein and fat, good fat. So those are strategies to help you lose weight without medication. When um, we have our patients on a program, when they come in for their pellet, for hormone pellets, we don't just look at their hormones and say, oh, here, take some testosterone and estrogen. We look at the whole thing. We look at their, their past medical history, their allergies. We look at their weight. We look at their, and we do a body composition me measurement to see, I mean, you could weigh what you should weigh, but have no muscle and have all fat, and that's not healthy. So we evaluate all of that, and we evaluate blood work. 
So when our patients come in, we're not just interested in throwing some hormones at them. We're trying to get them healthier and motivate patients to actually eat the right stuff, eat things that are profitable to them, and, and not eat things that are bad for them. I mean, the problem is you think of your mother when someone tells you not to eat certain things, and then you think, oh, my gosh, I'm going to rebel. Well, that's not helping you any. So we try to link feeling better with a better diet. And we go over diet with people, and we try to find the right diet. We also use appetite suppressants, and we use metformin, and we use the semaglutides, and we use whatever else we need for that patient. And every patient is different. So we devise a different plan for everyone and go over the different foods they should eat. But that's very tedious, and I'm hoping some of my patients will actually listen to this or read the blog on the simple sugars and complex sugars and what to do instead. Because this is kind of part of what we try to uh, teach them. And we give every one of our patients one of our books, uh, one of my books, The Secret Female Hormone, which is my book for women, and The Got Testosterone is my book for men. They have diet um, recommendations there. And so you can look at those books to get these diets. You can also uh, become one of our patients and we will look at your body composition and try to help you get to uh, a weight and a um, an athletic level where you can hike and do the things that you want to do as long as you don't have uh, a medical problem that would prevent that. So just remember that food is not just an entertainment. Food is really a fuel, and you just wouldn't put water in your car or um, olive oil in your mower. I mean, you have to put the right food in humans to get keep their brain going, to keep them from getting disease, and to keep them active and healthy. So please remember that and try to change your attitude toward food and drink and think of it as a way to be healthier. Thank you for listening. I hope this really helped delineate what... Um, I, we're always trying to say, but don't spend the time to do the detail work. This is the detail work. What you shouldn't eat and what you should eat and how you can be healthy and how you can manage your types of foods and when to eat. Thanks for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth.